ladies and gentlemen, without wasting much time, please allow me to uh, bring in the number one man of Imo State, His Excellency, the Governor of Imo State, Senator Hope Uzodima, as he takes us through AC 2020, post-COVID-19, Africa in the new economic order. I came into office in January this year, just as the COVID-19 pandemic was spreading its tentacles to Africa after its birth in Wuhan, China. While some of my colleagues can be termed COVID-19 survivors, it may not be wrong to see me as COVID-19 governor. The pandemic hardly allowed me to settle down in office before engulfing Africa as a whole. As we all must recall, COVID-19 came into the world with a dreadful bang. Everyone and everything was threatened by the virus. It triggered the most devastating global economic downturn since the Great Depression in Africa, Nigeria, and indeed Imo State. I was trapped right in the midst of this global economic meltdown. Other depleting circumstances around me, such as the empty treasury I met and the absence of a handover note, did not help matters. Yet, in spite of a most daunting takeoff point, I had to kickstart the government business, nothing less. And why not? I knew that I was elected governor to provide solutions to challenges, not to provide excuses. This background also accounts for why I readily accepted to be a speaker at this visual conference with the topic post-COVID-19, Africa and the new economic order. As I've already mentioned, the pandemic posed a major threat to the world's economy. The crashing of stock markets, which raised the fears of global recession in all familiar, is all familiar to us. Global economy came to a halt, even if it is temporary. Africa, with an estimated population of over 1 billion people, was caught off guard by the pandemic, due largely to its over-dependence on mono-economy. Although Africa has recorded only about 2 million coronavirus cases, with a little above 40,000 deaths, the pandemic has dealt a crushing blow on many of the continent's economies. Just recently, the World Bank made a forecast that sub-Saharan Africa economies could experience recession with GDP growth expected to fall from 2 to 4 percent in 2019 to 5.1 percent in 2020 as a result of the pandemic. As we all know, COVID-19 magnified the risk of Africa's over-independence on single natural resources, especially oil, gold, diamond, and coffee. Algeria, Nigeria, Angola, and Libya are dependent on oil export, just as South Africa and few others rely on gold exports. On the other hand, Botswana, Democratic Republic of Congo, and Sierra Leone cannot survive without diamond exports, while a few others, including Ivory Coast, are dependent on exports of hardwood, coffee, cocoa, and rubber. This low level of economic diversification is one of the leading factors in Africa's economic vulnerability. It goes without saying 
that Africa cannot afford to sustain the current liturgy in economic development, except it wants to continue to reinforce hardship on the citizenry. Moving away from a mono economy is the only way to go in a post COVID 19 economy of the world. If there is one lesson that we have learned from the pandemic, it is the lesson of self reliance, looking inward for our economic survival. In an increasingly deglobalized world, occasioned by protectionism, mistrust, and economic survivalist instincts. African countries, including Nigeria, have come to a rude awakening that we have to look inwards for our survival. With battered economies that suffered hemorrhage as a result of low income from oil exports, many African nations have come to the shocking realization that they must diversify or remain permanently weakened economically. Apart from diversification, African economies should embrace inter-African trade, especially now that the pandemic has led to trade conflicts among America, Europe, China, and Asia generally. Trade barriers among African countries should be relaxed to such a level that it would be easier for them to leverage on economies of one another for survival. They should also leverage on increased local manufacturing through the establishment of agro-based medium and small-scale industries to quicken the pace of economic development. Another aspect that should enhance our economic survival as a nation is the digitalization. One country that is leading us in this aspect in Africa is Rwanda. We need to embrace digital technologies for companies to seek to boost competitiveness by slimming down and reducing established costs in their business. Let me add that Imo State is following the full steps of Rwanda. Imo State is already a digitalized economy. All physical transactions of government have been digitalized, and Imo State currently boasts of the best data center in Nigeria. Some fear that digitalization might lead to loss of jobs. Such people forget that ultimately, the digitalized companies will survive to rev up the economy and even create new jobs. The Imo example, as I explained earlier, I took my oath of office as the governor of Imo State in the midst of the pandemic. I was confronted by two major challenges, containing the pandemic and keeping the economy of the state running. These were no mean tasks, especially as I inherited the state whose health care was in comatose and the morale of the citizens at its lowest ebb. I consider that my first task was to keep Imo people healthy, alive, and safe in the midst of the rampaging COVID-19 pandemic. After all, the saying that health is wealth still remains an undisputed truism. To this end, my response was to set up a task force to check out the spread of coronavirus. The task force is shared by an erudite professor and former INEC chairman, Professor Morris Iwu. I also established isolation centers in the three senatorial zones of Owere, Okigwe, and Olu. Above all, I procured over 30 ambulances fully equipped to handle health emergencies and deployed them to all the local government areas of the state, while some were stationed at the state capital or where. Recently, we also deployed mobile clinics to the local governments to take care of the aged and vulnerable. This is in addition to building two world-class referral hospitals in the state to manage critical cases 
arising from the pandemic. Apart from securing the health sector, which is set critical to the boosting of the state's economy, we've gone ahead to resuscitate some industries and critical infrastructures. We've revamped the Otamere Water Scheme and other part Nigerian Limited. Currently, the company produces 300,000 metric tons of pump oil and offers on a monthly basis and offers more than 5,000 direct and indirect employment to the people of the state. Only recently, we released 2 billion naira from a 6 billion naira fund set aside to empower our youths who are currently undergoing training in skill acquisition programs. The amount is to assist them set up businesses so as to stem unemployment in the state. More than 500,000 youths will ultimately benefit from the exercise. That is aside a record of 10,000 that are already being trained through the Central Bank of Nigeria initiative. Our overall goal is to engage this productive sector of our population to be self-reliant and insulated from the negative effects of COVID-19 pandemic in all its ramifications. It is unfortunate that because of the dependence of the federal government on oil revenue, the states have had to suffer dwindling revenue allocations. We are, however, gradually changing the narratives in Imo State through increased internally generated revenue powered by active private sector collaboration in boosting our economy. With our manufacturing industries coming on stream, an effective and efficient management of the economy will lead to creation of more job opportunities. As you are aware, our state is not only blessed with oil and gas, but many minerals that will come handy in our manufacturing drive. Our target, therefore, is to exploit all those minerals available to be able to boost our economy. As I observed at the recent conference in Owerri on gas utilization, with the unsteady and the ever-changing price of oil in the international market, gas has a more stable influence in national planning. The least that can be said of the advantages we can derive from gas is, is that explored to the hilt as a domestic fuel. It will help to preserve our forest resources. Aware of the potentials of gas as a major COVID-19 economic succor, my administration is leaving no stone unturned in partnering with investors in this area. This explains why we gladly hosted the Gas Utilization Conference in a world, Imo State Capital. Let me inform my esteemed participants and listeners at this current conference that of the 182 trillion cubic feet of gas reserve in Nigeria, Imo State accounts for almost one quarter of it, making her the state with the largest gas deposit in the country. In addition, it is also scientifically proven that the gas deposit in the state is the finest in the country. With such huge fine gas reserve in Imo State, it should be the investment haven of gas companies in the country. We've also put all necessary machinery in motion to ensure that Imo State is the investment destination dream of majority investors in the oil and gas business and indeed every other investor. Our ease of doing business is second to none in the entire Southeast. We have a work in the Certificate of Occupancy Arrangement that makes it easy for genuine investors to set up shops with minimum delay. Conscious of the fact that meaningful business can only thrive in a secure environment, my administration has put in place an efficient security outfit, Operation Search and Flush, which ensures a 24-hour security surveillance in the whole state. We provided over 100 patrol vans for this purpose. The patrol vehicles are manned by a combined team of security operators. 
to run from all relevant security agencies, including the army and the police. The patrol vans have state-of-the-art communication gadgets that enables them to be in constant link with our two free call center through which the people can reach them on any suspected crime and other emergencies. Yes, I can indeed beat my chest and proclaim that the most state is safe for business. An efficient security outfit on ground, and with our proactive engagement of the youths, we can say for certain that IMO is safe for post COVID 19 business. One thing you can take home from the brief outline of our IMO post COVID 19 initiative as a book is that we are set to create an economy that will be stronger, more inward looking and certainly more resilient. In essence, the necessary economic ingredients are on ground for the post-COVID-19 new economic order in Imo State. I believe that the lessons of COVID-19 have also been assimilated by all the countries in Africa. What ought to follow is the unleashing of our innate potentials to enhance our economic well-being through a deliberate and sustained backward integration policy. This step is cogent and inevitable because that is the only way to place Africa in a strong position to compete in the new economic order after the pandemic. Thank you for your time. I wish all of us a very successful conference. Well, there you have it, uh, the number one man of the eastern heartland of Nigeria, better known as Emo State. Thank you very much once more, uh, Your Excellency, the uh, Governor of Emo State in person, Hope Uzodima. Well, ladies and